All right, hi guys. Today we're talking about the PPP Flexibility Act. This was just passed by the Senate today. Well, it's June 3rd, but we're like almost at midnight by the time I'm recording this, so it was passed today. However, this video is gonna get to you on June 4th. So the PPP, Paycheck Protection Program Flexibility Act. This Flexibility Act is has made some pretty significant changes to the PPP program. And this is gonna help a lot of small business owners, especially the ones that have not been able to reopen because of COVID-19. So we are gonna go through kind of the key points, the things that I think you need to pay attention to. Um, the, this act that was published is only 10 pages long and even a couple of those pages are blank. So I would recommend you actually go ahead and look at it. Now, what it does and the way that it's set up is it says, go to this paragraph and strike the original CARE Act and replace it with this paragraph and blah, blah, blah. So I'm gonna walk you through that part because that's a little tedious. <laughs> and I just wanted to, you guys to see it directly and we're just gonna talk through, okay? So you may have heard about this Flexibility Act and I kind of wanna just maybe start with why. Why did it, why did it come about? So the reason that it came about is there were lots of business owners that were getting into situations where they got PPP loans, but they really have been able, they haven't been able to use them because maybe they haven't been able to open up. Think about all the restaurants, think about some of the retail operations that haven't been able to open up because of the, um, you know, maybe state mandated phasing of uh, things being opened up or just the fact that like there's no way to socially distance in the current environment with certain types of businesses. You know, think about gyms, think about restaurants, think about brick and mortar shops that are having um, issues reopening. These types of businesses may have gotten this PPP money thinking, okay, everything's gonna blow over in a month or two. That's not the case. Now we know that it could be maybe even the end of the summer, maybe even into the fall before some things are able to open up. So there was a big push to extend this date and the time that people were able to use this money. So, hence the PPP Flexibility Act. <laughs> this is where we're at right now, guys, okay? So I want you guys to just bear with me. There's gonna be a few tedious things and I might be flipping through pages because I've got both the original CARES Act in front of me and then I also have the Flexibility Act right here. So we're gonna reference a couple things. All right, so the first thing I wanna say is that the first thing they strike is the idea of the, well, I'm gonna back it up, okay? This is not into law yet, okay? This Flexibility Act has not been signed by the president as of 11.55 on June 3rd, okay? Now, it might get directly to his desk, he might put his little signature on it and we might be good to go and this will be put into law. Uh, there could potentially be some adjustments we don't know just yet, but I am taking this act as approved by the House and the Senate, and we're gonna look at it here, okay? So just caveat that we might do another update once it's all final, I'll double check it and make sure that there's no changes to what we're talking about here, okay? Um, so I do want to just bring that to light, okay? So the changes to this rule are really focused on section 1106, from the original CARES Act, which is the loan forgiveness portion. All right, um, and the very first thing it's going to say is that the covered period, your eight week covered period that we talked about has now been extended to 24 weeks. 24 weeks, guys. This is a big change. You know, you're talking about a significant change in the time period that we can use this PPP money. So that essentially helps out all those people that might have been, um, you know, might have been thinking, hey, I can't open until August. Hey, I can't open until the end of July. Hey, I can't open until September. Now you have, from the time you get your money, up 24 weeks after that to use your money, okay? Um, now, another thing that it says is it says, the ending of the earlier of 24 weeks after the date of origination or December 31st, 2020. So the very latest this money can be used is December 31st, 2020, okay? 
Um, so that might be like, maybe there was still money in the CARES Act and like you got a PPP loan suit or not in the CARES Act, in the Paycheck Protection Program and you got your money super late, okay? They're, they're kind of capping it at the end of this year, which it, it seems fair. Um, okay, so that is the first change. That is a big change. That is, that is a very, very, very big change, okay? Um, and so with that, there's a couple other things that I wanted to point out. And so we get into, because they're changing the potential date of the, that you can use the funds, they're also saying that we're going to now change that date of when we need to look at FTEs. Okay. So we're going to, you know, before we were looking at FTEs as of June 30th, but now we're going to also extend that to December 31st. So, and I, before you freak out, because this caused me to freak out a little bit because I said, whoa, 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 what about all my, my clients that have been using their money and they knew that they had to keep their employees through June 30th and we've all been building up to June 30th, what are they gonna do? Because we've done all these FTE calculations and whatnot. They have provided a election in this act that allows you to basically go by the old rules. You can go by the old rules of the eight weeks, how we've always been talking about it, um, or you can choose to kind of adopt this 24 week cycle that we're talking about, okay? So there's gonna be some businesses that are gonna really want that eight weeks, and then there's gonna be some that are, you know, the only way they can use their money is to use it on the 24 week period. Okay, so I want you guys to think about that. Think about which one is better for you. Chances are, if you've already started spending your money, you probably want to just keep spending it. But this is going to be dependent, um, you know, totally on your personal situation. So um, I can't give blanket, blanket advice for that. Okay. Now, this act has also provided a few more exemptions to the potential FTE count because they're saying, hey, um, I'm going to read these to you actually because these are kind of interesting. They're basically saying that we understand that it's been hard to rehire employees in this environment, not just because unemployment is so great right now, but also because there are just physical limitations that we're having to implement because of COVID. So they're saying if you, so this is kind of, I, I, I'm assuming this is an addition already to the FTE issues that we've already discussed in previous, um, in previous uh, videos, but it's also saying if you are not able to rehire because you aren't able to find eligible employees, like you've done a good faith search and you can't find them, then you can um, be waived to the FTE issue, um, FTE reduction. And, and remember that's full-time equivalent reduction because if you don't have as many employees as you had before pre-COVID, as of this you know, now, December 31st date, then you have to consider it for reduction. Um, so they're saying if you can't find any new people that are as good as the people that you had that meet the requirements, you they're they're ineligible. You can't find good people. Then you could potentially get a um, FTE exemption. And the other one, and this is kind of interesting. The other one is that if you are not able to return to the same level of business you were at before February 15th, 2020, because you were complying with the guidance issued by the Secretary of Health and Human Services, the director, or basically the CDC, um, Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, or Occupational Safety Health Administration. Administration. So we're talking about DHHS, uh, CDC or OSHA during the period during this like COVID time, if you have not been able to bring your business back because of whatever it is that the type of business that you have, you know, and you can't maintain sanitation and social distancing that complies with these guidelines, then you can have an exemption. So this is kind of interesting. I'm not exactly sure which businesses are going to be most affected by this, but you know, I'm, I'm thinking, um, you know, anytime, like if you have a type of business that you have to have employees working in really close quarters together and you're not able to properly socially distance them or you're not able to, um, you know, provide the sanitation that you need, 
Um, and, or maybe like you just have to, you know, maybe ramp down production because you can't get all those people into the same environment that they were before, then you can potentially be um, eligible for this exemption. So that is new. These two things are new. Like if you just can't find any good candidates and you, you know, can't bring your business back to the level that it was, both of these things are okay. Okay. So this, this is one of the, the things that makes it more flexible, the PPP Flexibility Act. Okay. On this specifically, they say you must be able to document it, okay? We've already talked about documentation and this is part of that as well. Putting that over there. All right, and we already talked about the fact, this is, this is on page five of the act. We, are, we did already talk about the fact that you can elect to stay with the old rule and how that was, or you can um, go to the new 24, 24 week option. Now, <laughs> now comes the big one. If you elect to use these laws and to, to use the Flexibility Act, then you can use um, at least 60% of your loan amount on payroll, and you can use up to 40% on other allowable costs. Remember, this is 7525. It was for a really long time. You had to spend at least 75% on payroll and 25% you could use up to 25% on other allowable costs. They have increased the percentage. So now you can use up to 60% on payroll or you can use up to 40% on other allowable costs and you can use 60% or more on payroll costs. So this is potentially helpful for a lot of you. However, this is very, very important. It is saying that you must use at least 60% on payroll or none of it is forgiven. There is a cliff here. If you use 59.5% on payroll, you are not gonna get any of this forgiven. So this is a very important piece and I want you guys to know about that, okay? So this might go into your determination on whether or not you wanna use the 24 period or if you wanna just go ahead and use the eight week period, okay? Um, hopefully we'll get a little bit further guidance on that, but so far it's being interpreted that it is a cliff. All right, another thing that this act put into place was that it's deferring the payment of interest on the loan to match when you have a determination on your payroll forgiveness or paycheck protection program forgiveness. Because what we were discovering when the, when the forgiveness rules came out is they said that you might need to potentially re start repaying your loan before it had a chance to go to your bank and then go to the SBA for final approval. So this Flexibility Act is changing that and it's saying you don't have to make any payments until there's been a forgiveness determination, okay? Which is helpful, okay? Because, I mean, what if you were paying on, you know, a $500,000 loan, a couple months of that at a two-year term could be a really... Um, you know, hurtful thing for a lot of people. All right. The last thing I want to cover is that there has been an extension of the loan terms. So if you apply for forgiveness and maybe you were only able to get uh, some of it forgiven and you had a remainder of a loan left over, um, what that would mean is that you would um, change. Remember, this used to be a two-year a two-year loan at 1%. And we were kind of worried about that, especially if people weren't able to get a lot forgiven because two years is not a very long time for a business loan. So that has been changed. That now is a five-year maturity date. So that's a five-year loan, okay? Um, minimum, minimum five years, okay? So these are kind of the big updates, okay? So we've got this potential for extension. We've got this loan extension um, of the terms, which helps with cash flow because if you did potentially have a larger loan at the end of all this, uh, you would have a longer time to pay that back. And it, remember, it's still 1% over the life of the loan. So that's really great. Um, so, okay, guys, that's it. Uh, stay tuned because... This is the update. It doesn't mean it's everything. It means that we are covering it as it comes in. And I think I hit all the highlights. So um, you guys are gonna have questions. <laughs> 
I know there's going to be questions and you know, I don't know if I can answer them all because this, we have a little, basically eight pages of documentation to apply this at this point. And uh, we're, we're probably going to get guidance from the treasury. So once the treasury guidance comes out, if there's anything that needs to be sussed out and nuanced, we will go through that as well. So just wanted to get this to you ASAP. Hopefully this will be and become law ASAP as well. So we can go ahead and start making some better determinations for you guys and what you need to do with your PPP loans. All right, make sure you are subscribed to this channel so you get all this information as it comes in because I am here to help you even at midnight. <laughs> even at midnight sometimes, this is the time that I get to record videos, all right? So I am here for you, I support you. Thank you for all your support and I will continue to work hard to bring this information to you. All right, bye guys.